everyone and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. If not, welcome back and thank you for supporting. I'm Coretta. In this video, I will be making another shirt for my niece. Today, I will be applying heat transfer vinyl, also known as HTV, to a t-shirt. Want to see how I do it? Stick around. The supplies that I'm going to use for this project is a Gildan's t-shirt that I purchased from Michaels. I have um, some heat transfer vinyl HTV that I purchased from Expression Vinyl. I have a measuring tape that I picked up at Walmart from the sewing section. I have my Cricut weeding tool and my Cricut scissors that I that came in the bundle that I purchased from um, Cricut. I also selected my image from Creative Fabrica. I am an affiliate. I will leave the, leave the link down below in the video so that um, if you're interested in the design or any other design, you can go there. I also used my Cricut Explore Air 2 as well as my Cricut Auto Press. The first step to making a t-shirt is to find an image or a design you would like to put on your shirt. I'm going to head over to Creative Fabrica and I am going to find an image. To find my image, I am going to type Black Girl Magic in the search bar. And this is, I'm going to look through here to find my image. So if you don't know, Creative Fabrica is a great resource for um, finding images to do projects with. I will have a link in the description below for you to be able to try Creative Fabrica. So this is the so here's the image that I am going to use. I'm going to open select the image. And then I'm going to select download. The file, as you can see in the bottom left-hand corner, is downloading to my downloads folder in Explore. And here, you're going to have a zipped file. When you get the file and it, when you download the file, it's zipped. So you would have to right-click it and hit extract all and then hit extract. So once you, in order to upload the image into Cricut Design Space, you have to unzip the folder. So once we've unzipped the folder, you can see that there are four files here in this folder. There's a DXF file, an EPS file, a PNG file, and an SBG file. We will be using the SG file to complete our project. So we're going to head over to Cricut Design Space. We're going to select new project in the upper right hand corner. And here we're going to upload the image to the canvas. To upload into Cricut, you would go to upload upload image, browse. You will find the image that you want to use by going to the folder where the image is located. And we're going to select this SVG file. The image will upload as a cut image and you will hit upload. Then you would select the file in your recent uploads and then you would select add to canvas. The template will upload into design space. Once you're onto your once the design is on your canvas, you will size the design to your liking. For me, sizing my design always depends on the size of my t-shirt. I always use a t-shirt decal sizing chart to size and place my design. 
you can Google t-shirt decal sizing chart and find different images of the standard chart. But ultimately, you can size your design as big or as small as you would like. Today, I am using a medium t-shirt. According to the sizing chart, my design should be nine and a half inches wide. And so that I do not distort my image or my design, I am going to make sure that my proportions are locked so it would automatically select the height. So we're gonna make sure our proportion is locked by hitting the lock pad that is at the top on the toolbar under size. So you wanna hit the lock bar. You wanna make sure your image is selected and you wanna type in the width that you desire. I want my image to be nine and a half inches wide. So I'm gonna type in 9.5 and hit enter. It automatically sized my design to 7.6. Now I can see that there are a lot of layers on the right hand side in the layers panel. These are specifically good if you want to change the layers to different colors. For this project, we are doing a basic t-shirt. And so we're going to keep all of the layers as one color. And since we're using an SVG and it has multiple layers, we want to make sure that when we go to cut this file, that it will be, it will cut exactly how we see it on the screen. So to do that, you would need to make sure your whole image is selected. And then you would hit attach. And it's on your bottom right hand corner. You would select attach. And that will attach all of your um, layers and make it and keep them together so that when you go to cut the design, it keeps all the elements in the same position that they are on your screen now. So after sizing and attaching everything, we're gonna go to make it. So, and make it is in your upper right hand corner, you would hit make it. Here on this screen, you see our design, and now um, the options here are your project copies. So you can change this number to how many projects you want to cut. It has the basic cut with the material, material load type on the mat. Your material size is set to default at 12 by 12, and then you have mirror. So this is a very important step. Whenever you're cutting heat transfer vinyl or HTV, we want to make sure that we mirror our design. And to do that, you would change this button to green. This will then flip our design backwards. Now remember, this is a very important step. Also, to ensure that you don't cut off any of your design, you wanna kinda of grab your design and move it over just a little bit, slightly move it over so that it's not touching the red line, the red box that is around your mat. You just wanna move it slightly off of there. And this is going to ensure that the design doesn't get cut off at the top or on the side. So now that we've done that, we're going to select continue. Okay. On this screen, we will be selecting our material that we're going to cut. So, I'm using the Cricut Explore Air 2 and I have my dial set on custom so I can select my, I can make a selection from all of the base materials that are available. And so for this project, I'm going to select Everyday Iron-On and the iron-on that I'm using 
is the Caesar Everyday Iron-On. So that's why I'm selecting this setting. And now that we have all the settings complete, now it's time to load our mat and begin cutting. Okay, so here we are. And I am um, at my desk and we are going to load our mat with the vinyl. So I'm going to use this standard grip mat and I'm going to use my heat transfer vinyl or my HTV to the mat. When placing your vinyl on the mat, you want to make sure that you place it with the shiny side down. So you want the shiny side down and the dull side you want to be facing you. And so you want to load your mat on, you want to load your vinyl on your mat. And you want to make sure that you put your, your vinyl in the corner of the mat at the top. And then you want to put it at the bottom. And then you just want to smooth it out and get all the bubbles out so that you can get a clean cut. And I use my hand for this. You can use a brayer. You can use a scraper. But I always just use my hand. It's better for me that way. So next, after we have our um, mat loaded, we're going to put it on the machine so that we can cut it. Okay, so here we are at the machine and we just want to double check to make sure that our mat is loaded with the shiny side down because the shiny side is the side with is the side where the carrier sheet is and when we mirrored our design it was so that it would cut backwards and when we put it on the shirt the carrier sheet facing up the design will be placed correctly on the shirt so now let's load the machine so we're going to put the mat into the machine and we're going to pl press the flashing arrow And then we're gonna press the flashing C. And then it'll begin cutting. So once your machine finished cutting, you can unload the mat and remove the vinyl from the mat. To unload the mat, you would hit the flashing arrow. We've unloaded the machine and now we need to remove our vinyl, our heat transfer vinyl from the mat. And so the best way to do that would be to flip the mat over and remove the vinyl remove the mat from the vinyl. And so you want to remove the mat from the vinyl. So you would just peel the mat away from the vinyl. And you do this because it will prevent the vinyl from curling up, making it kind of difficult to maneuver when you're um, trying to weed it. So that was the best, that's the best way to remove your vinyl from your mat. Now, the next thing we need to do is weed the parts that we don't need, leaving the design on the carrier sheet. To weed my design, I am going to use my Cricut weeding tool with the assistance of my Cricut scissors. So before I start weeding, I am just going to cut down the vinyl um, to where the design is, I'm gonna cut off the excess vinyl where the vinyl didn't cut. So I'm gonna cut off the excess vinyl and use these scraps for a smaller project. So you wanna cut off your, your part that didn't um, get cut and save that part. Can't waste any vinyl. And then we're gonna turn it over and then we're gonna weed the parts that we don't need leaving the design on the carrier sheet. To weed, you would simply 
pull from the corner and pull out, pull the vinyl off in the place that, and it'll leave behind, it will leave behind the vinyl design. So I'm going to weed this off. And don't be rough like I am being right now. You want to be gentle because you want to make sure that you don't accidentally pull up any pieces that you need for your design. So I'm going to start by taking my time and pulling off the vinyl a little less aggressive so that I don't mess up and tear or remove something that I need in my design. Now I have majority of the design weeded out. Now I'm just gonna go back and pull off the smaller pieces that were left behind. So now we have all of the pieces removed and this is the design, the way it will look when you place it on your shirt. So while we're letting the heat press heat up, I am going to show you at my table how I place my design on my shirt. According to the t-shirt decal sizing chart, your shirt, your design should be at least three inches down from the bottom of your collar. And so you wanna take your measuring tape and put it at the bottom of the t-shirt, the neck of the t-shirt, and you wanna find the third, three inches from the bottom of your neckline. And so I always just take my fingernail and make a little marking right there. The next thing that I did was that when I pre-pressed my shirt, I pre-pressed my shirt to take the moisture out, but I also folded my shirt in half and I created a crease down the middle of the shirt. And this is going to help me to identify where the middle of my shirt is so that I can place my design in the middle of my shirt. Now I've identified the middle of my design by taking the design and folding it in half where the near where the the furthest edges are. And I just fold, you know, put a crease in it. Just fold it in half like this and match up the the farthest ends and then you put a crease in the top of it or you can use a ruler. So I do both. I find the center of my shirt, I place my design down, and then I place my shirt down, make sure it's straight, making sure that the design is placed on the shirt straight, and then I measure with my ruler, I measure the furthest point of the shirt to the edge of the shirt here. So this is the furthest point of the shirt here. So I am going to measure to the edge of the shirt and it's like five and a half. And then this is the furthest edge of the shirt, of the design, I'm sorry, the furthest edge of the design and I'm going to measure here. And it's about five, eh, just a little shy 
of five and a half. You can move it over a little bit if you want to. If not, I'm going to move it over just slightly. So I'm going to pick my design up and I'm going to move it over slightly. Again, placing it down so that the design is straight. However, I want the design to be centered on the shirt. So I'm going to check it again. And so from this corner to the edge of the shirt, I have five and a half. And from this side to this side, I have about five and a half. It's just a little shy, like just one line shy of five and a half. Yeah. So I'm satisfied with that. And so now we're going to go over to the heat press and press the design onto the t-shirt. So here we are at the heat press. We've weeded everything. We've pre-pressed our shirt to get the moisture out and we've placed our design on our shirt. So to press your design onto your shirt, you can use a heat press, um, a Cricut Easy Press, or a regular household iron. When I first started making t-shirts, I used my household iron until I was able to get me a Cricut Easy Press 2. And then later, I was able to get me the Cricut Auto Press. So I'm going to press this design for 20 seconds at 315 degrees. So that looks good. Now I'm just going to peel it off because Caesar Easy Weed is a warm peel. So I'm going to peel the carrier sheet off the design. So once you've pressed the front of your shirt, you want to flip your shirt over so it's on the back side and you just want to give it another press for five to 10 seconds to make sure that the heat transfer vinyl adheres properly to your t-shirt. So we're going to press this for five seconds and then we're going to open the heat press and we'll be done with our shirt. So we press the front and we press the back of our shirt and now we we're finished we've made a t-shirt using heat transfer vinyl all right guys that's all for now i hope that you were able to follow along with my process if you like this video and would like to see more please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends also, please consider subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you can be notified every time I upload a video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will respond back. Thank you for watching and see you in my next video.